is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another 2-in-1 AEW Unmatched Series review, and we are also ranking AEW Unmatched Series number one from worst to best, in my own personal opinion. Now, diving in, guys, we are on the last two figures in the set. We have Dustin Rhodes and the LJN Cody. Very excited for both of these. I think it's very interesting the way they're implementing the LJNs into the line, you know, kind of getting in some, you know, some unique and different ways of getting different figures into this Unmatched Series. Series, while also combining that with the unrivaled style figures and the different packaging pretty cool stuff man pretty freaking awesome stuff going on and uh, i can't wait to get into it of course we have already looked at miro Britt baker kenny omega and Darby allen we are going to rank these guys at the end of the video so definitely stay tuned for that but i'm going to move these guys out of the way so that we can dive into our packaging for these guys A little tech deck action back here what's going on with that but here's the packaging for the two i love the way dustin looks he kind of matches the you know the background of the figure with the silver and everything that looks really really clean and i think i like this figure better than his series 2 unrivaled but here's the ljn right here guys if you guys wanted to see i know we have two different styles of packaging but they both have an image of themselves here here's more of like a drawing slash cartoon of cody at the bottom it does say ljn logo here you got wrestling superstars cody Rhodes over there a nice callback to the classic packaging you get aew up here light yellow going on i love the light blue as well free cody Rhodes poster inside this is awesome right there aew logo here on the back you get the classic carding wrestling superstars kind of weird because we just got something similar to this for our mattel sergeant slaughter sdcc exclusive here's the poster that's inside got the aew here aew and wrestling superstars at the top another aew logo on the side it says cody Rhodes there number eight in the series and then the dustin Rhodes is pretty much the same image of dustin name of dustin aew logo there same number down there picture of the talent rest of the figures in the wave where he wore the gear all out 2020 and that pretty much takes care of of your packaging man I, I like the way it looks i think it's awesome and this lj and cody is much bigger than i thought it was going to be i don't know what i was expecting but it looks to be pretty damn big man but let's go ahead and crack them out of the packaging so we can get started on this review and rank this set so here is Dustin and Cody out of the packaging, guys. We got the brothers here, one obviously in the unrivaled style figure and then one in the classic LJN. I will say again, you guys can see the hefty comparison between the two in the size. Like, look at this LJN, man. He's pretty damn big. And I think these are awesome, like just straight up. We're gonna get into it more and break down all the details, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this LJN. I'm really not one to be a collector of these. It's pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie to you. Kyle Peterson has done a, a wonder in me in my collecting habits and like what I like and don't like just like watching his channel and his his full room tour and stuff made me like learn to appreciate other style figures and mock collecting and all these other things so huge shout out to Kyle Peterson if you guys don't know him definitely go check out his channel but what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna break down Dustin's accessories and Dustin and then we're gonna run it back and take a closer look at Cody and then we are going to rank AEW Unmatched Series 1 from worst to best and see which figure takes the cake here Brad so the live detected said I don't know what the hell that was let's dive into Dustin's accessories so getting into Dustin's accessories, guys, starting out with our heads, you get two interchangeable head sculpts. Now, I did go ahead and pop the one off the packaging here. Here's the serious face sculpt. Really like it. I think it has a ton of likeness to Dustin. You got the blue, black, and red. Very nice color scheme going on. Give me a real Darth Maul kind of vibe, even though it's not completely red and black. It still just kind of gives me that vibe for whatever reason. Back of the head does have the blonde hair and everything. I think the likeness to Dustin is, is just ridiculous. I think it is a really good head sculpt. Not only do you have that head, guys, but you also have the screaming head sculpt which is a brand new head and i like uh, i like both of these a lot like dead gum man the pissed off determined head and then the yelling expression looks really good the face paint is consistent it looks really clean they did a really good job on these true effects and all these are great head sculpts outside of that guys you also get interchangeable hands now i'm not sure exactly what these hands are supposed to be entrance hands grabbing hands you know i'm, I'm guessing it's entrance hands but he i mean you might can do some other things with it but i like them the silver looks really good the blue looks good the mold on the gloves looks really sick as well so I can appreciate that. Outside of these hands, you also get mic holding hands out of the packaging or the regular grappling hands, whatever you want to call these. So, I mean, I guess we can call them mic holding hands. You can hold a mic with it. You can hold a couple weapons with it as as well, I'm sure. But yeah, man, really digging these head sculpts, but that's pretty much the main meat and potatoes of what you get for accessories. So starting out at the top of the head sculpt, guys, we have already seen this. We just took a closer look at it, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it does look really good. You know, if you guys were wondering what it looks like on the body, I think it looks nice. Again, the, the head 
sculpt is nice and proportionate. I like it. Everything going on with it. Going down to the torso, guys, it is a different colorway than what we got with his first Series 2 figure. And you got the red and the and the black going on on the on the abdomen right there. You get the nice logo here. The blue and blacks, like the, the shininess that comes off of it is very accurate to how it looks in real life. So they did a really good job at capturing what the suit and what his attire actually looks like, I think. You know, that sleeveless bodysuit that he likes to wear. Uh, it looks really good, man. Like all the different tones and stuff on the back. It does say natural. You get this like black and red colorway going on. It says natural and white, of course. You do get his full sleeve tattoos and then you get his left side over here. Good tattoo work going all the way around. The arm looks really good. Even got the mini skulls down here on the forearm. You got the black wrist tape. Blue gloves like we discussed. You do get that like crocodile pattern going on on the crotch. You get the black legs with the blue designs going on as well. Spinal cord goes all the way down to the butt cheeks, which is appreciated. Then you do have the black boots with natural on the back. You get the video camera and then you also get the longhorn right there. So that's pretty cool as well. I always loved his boots for that reason, like the little details. They are just standard black wrestling boots, but you do get the nice sculpt on there. And I don't know, man, really nice. I, I, I like this a lot. I like the way the Dustin feels in the hand. Like it, ha it has good feels to it. It feels a lot better than his first figure around. And then we are going to get into the comparison because I know a lot of people are going to want to know if his height was fixed. And yes, Brad, they did adjust his height, which I know a lot of people are going to be very thrilled about this because I feel like Mattel, I don't think Mattel would have fixed that, man. I don't know. Is there is there history in the past where they would have fixed that? This looks a lot more natural, if you will, pun intended. You guys can see the difference in the tattoos there. A lot more bold and colorful on the first side compared to the second side. The Unrivaled Series 2 to the Unmatched Series 1. I don't know, man. They get like half an inch. They took half an inch off, and I like the way it looks. So which one do you guys like better? I definitely like this gear better. I like the blue and the black better than the red and the black, but I don't know exactly where they cut the where they cut the plastic at. It's probably in, either in the calves. Yeah. I think they shaved some off the calves is what it's looking like, but I like that, man. Huge shout out to the Jazzwares design team for listening and wanting to adjust it and make it better, so that, that's awesome. But that pretty much does it for your Dustin Rhodes figure comparisons. So getting into LJN Cody, guys, starting out at the head sculpt, I like it. I think, you know, the LJNs are going to capture that true effects technology. It's not going to be a perfect sculpt, but I like it. I like the way it looks. I like the yelling expression right there. You guys can kind of see it right here in the background. He's not cross-eyed or anything. The blonde hair sculpt looks good as well. Dream tattoo on the torso. It has a very nice feel to it. It's not like super rough and tough or really, really hard. It feels good in the hand. He does have his neck tattoo which looks good as well. Really would like to see this figure. It's kind of like the Jacksonville Jaguars gear without the, the stripes on there or the spots. But the white belt, you got the nice like tealish color going down the side with the white and black. Really good contrast. Got the Cody Rhodes logo there. Cody Rhodes logo down there. You got Nightmare on the belt. Boots look really good with the sculpt and everything. White hand tape over here. No no, you know, no articulation or anything on this guy. It's just straight up like a rubber mold. And I love it, man. This is this is awesome. Like, I, I really do enjoy it. And I'm not one to appreciate figures like this most of the time, but it just feels really good in hand. And I think it'll look awesome on a shelf, especially once we get a nice little collection going. Uh, I want to do a loose and mock collection of the AEW line. So I'm going to do my best to keep up with everything. Like, there's so many different figures and stuff you got to track down. But, oh, man, we're in it for the long haul. They're going to keep releasing these exclusives and chases. And I'm going to have to just cut my hair off so i don't know man but i like the lj and cody man the tattoos look really good and i'm gonna try my best to keep this guy in pristine condition it's not like this guy's gonna be in a pick fed or anything like that so i should be able to keep him in relatively good shape he he doesn't pose around he's got one pose so just got to do my best to keep him in good condition and we'll see uh you know what these guys are worth down the line may not may not be worth a hill of beans but We'll have to find out together, but that's it for LJ and Cody, man. All right, guys, it is that time of the video where we rank AEW Unmatched Series 1 from worst to best. Really excited for this ranking, man. Um, not like the easiest ranking ever, but also not like a super difficult one, I don't think, for me. This line was pretty damn good. I think this is a pretty good first wave, if you ask me. Now, I will say it's kind of unfair, like, to loop the LJ and Cody in there because, you know, it's, it doesn't have the articulation. It's not going to be used. It's not like it's, uh, I don't have super nostalgic feels for the LJN, so it's not like, you know, I, I'm not probably going to give it bonus points and things like that, so that does kind of play an unfair 
player role in it. However, we're still going to rank this set from worst to best. And you guys know the criteria for ranking this set. I have two different rules or two different things I have to go over every single time. The first thing being, I rank these figures based on excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, how it poses around, the proportions and look of the figure, the accessories of the figure, the likeness of the figure. And a big thing about it is like my, my hype for the figure and then how it panned out. So if I have like super high expectations for a figure and it fails, that'll also put a dent in it. You know, am I excited to fed with it? Am I excited to just feel it in hand? You know, all these different things. And then of course, the second rule being just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. And just because a figure's number one doesn't mean it doesn't have any faults and it's just perfect. So let's get into my ranking. Now diving into the number six spot, again, it's not very fair, but I have to go with the LJN Cody. You know, uh, and, uh first point being, I didn't grow up with the LJNs. I don't have, I don't have a particular use for this figure. It looks fantastic and it is great. Maybe we can rank all the LJNs in one video one day when we get like a bunch of them. I could rank them. That'll be a really fun video to do. And until that day, Brad, you're going to come in at the bottom because you don't have any articulation, right? You don't have accessories. You are a beautiful looking figure, but uh, the articulation is, is going to hurt it for me. Now this is where we get into the meat and potatoes. This is actually a really hard ranking at these spots right here. Coming in at the number five spot, guys, Ah, this is hard. Coming to number five, guys, I'm going to go with Dustin. Ah, this hurts me because... They did such a great job on this figure. The head sculpt looks fantastic. It feels actually pretty good in the hand. I like the uh, the accessories, the interchangeable head sculpts. It's literally, it's kind of messed up, honestly, that he comes with the number five wave. But I had to put him at number five because of how good this wave is. And I feel like if he was a part of a different wave, it probably would do better for me. His torso isn't the most articulate. It's always been that way for Dustin. So, you know, that is what it is. But the head sculpt's great. The attire's great. They adjusted the height, which makes just pains me to put him at the number five spot. But out of this full wave, I think he is the fifth, my fifth favorite figure from the wave itself. So that is, I, I, I just, what am I supposed to do? Coming in at the number four spot, guys, I have to go with Miro. I love this figure. It was very, very hard to put Dustin above him, considering all those things we just said. But at the end of the day, man, if you own this figure, you know how great it feels in the hand. The only thing that I can really say that deducts the points are the proportions on the arms. But I love Miro. I love the attire they gave him. I love the articulation of him and he feels so good in the hand I like the head sculpt it's just uh, it's just one of those figures that I, I genuinely like and I could not put him underneath the dust and I did my best but at the end of the day the Miro just feels so good in the hand man he feels so good in the hand like he just poses really well I, I love the way it feels it's awesome and they added the kick pad rotation so that could be the equivalent of them adjusting Dustin's height they fixed the kick pad rotation now if this didn't have kick pad rotation it'd be underneath the LJ and Cody probably it would probably bother me that much. However, figure feels great. Miro comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, guys, I got Dr. Britt Baker. Really like the Britt Baker. It's been long enough. We finally got her in hand. She feels really good. She's the best women's figure they've made to date. I like it a lot. I really need to track down that Pittsburgh Steelers gear. Don't know how I'm going to get a loose version and a mock version of that, but maybe I'll get lucky. I don't know, but the Britt Baker figure is fire. I, I really like it. I think this is awesome. Really great women's figure. She comes in at number three. And down to two and one, guys, the two best figures in the set in my opinion. You got Darby Allen and Kenny Omega. I'm going Darby Allen number two and Kenny Omega number one. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say, Brad. Kenny Omega is my favorite wrestler in AEW. It's a beautiful looking figure. The tights look incredible. The head sculpt looks incredible. He's the elite champion. I'm going to get the most usage out of Kenny. It's just what it is, man. This figure is freaking fantastic. It's probably one of the best figures they've made in all of Jazzwares and AEW figures alone. And that Darby. The Darby is the same way. These came in the same way. These are the two superstars of the set i would say they're just really great to pose around and play with and everything so going through my ranking one more time man we got number one kenny number two darby number three Brittany, number four miroi number five Dustiny and number six cody yes but this is the time of the video man where i have to tell you to go grab these things over at ringside collectibles wrestlingfigures.com go use promo code md toys to save yourselves 10 percent when shopping over there man get in on all your pre-orders all of your different things there's a ton of stuff to go through man you gotta get it in while you can get it in go pre-order go get them go grab them plenty of more aew figures to come man apparently a lot of people are like tapping out on these things keeping them mocked because there's just so many figures coming so fast that people are like 
tapping out, man. They can't handle it. They can't handle the heat. And I'm gonna be real with you, man. Once they release that four pack and those two packs and this pack and that pack and all these different things, it is gonna be hard. I'm already in all the chase variants too, man. Jesus. Like we're six series in. They're already hitting retail and there's like 12 chase variant figures that I'm missing. I literally only have one. I have the MJF from series two. That's it. So I am uh, behind, Brad. But before we get out of here, guys, let's get into a random shout out. This shout out's gonna go to Moose Games who says, in the MDT pick fed, are you ever gonna change the outdated names to the current names like Rusev to Miro? And the only reason I would do that is if, um, I mean, you know, we, we Dean Ambrose is still Dean Ambrose. Luke Harper is Luke Harper. Rusev is Rusev. I don't think I'll ever change it unless storyline calls for it or if they leave for a while and come back or, or something like that because it's still my universe. Like if I wanted to call Kenny Omega Brightly Jacksony, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's like my own personal wrestling world and I could just make up names, I guess, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do anything stupid like that. But since that's who they were when I started it, I'm going to keep it that way unless storyline calls for something different. <coughs> <coughs> but a huge shout out to Moose Games for that question. I appreciate any questions you guys have, and I'll try to answer them in the random shout outs when they're available. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I really had a lot of fun with this set. Overall, great set in my opinion. I think every figure was pretty damn bomb, to be honest with you. Can't wait for more unmatched figures to come. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like the first series to Dustin figure tall idiot you cross the line